ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Reference Point, and I'm your host, Dave Cokerhook. And this evening, we're going to be in the second segment of our discussion with uh, Mark Quinn with the Small Business Administration. So, Mark, welcome back to Reference Point. Pleasure to have you back. Pleasure to be back. Fantastic. So last time, we talked a lot about the, the overall activity of the SBA. You mentioned some of the... Um, um, training consultative programs that are mm -hmm. available from the SBA directly, which is fantastic. And then your affiliates, uh, the Small Business Development Centers and SCORE organization. And, and that's, a, that's a huge advantage for someone who wants to go into business to be able to get that, that kind of uh, expertise uh, to help them learn what they need to learn in order to actually go out on their own. Absolutely. So. I think it's an important piece that getting started right and taking advantage of the resources is the key to start. Exactly. T tonight, what I want to talk about more, though, is the, um, the SBA uh, programs associated with uh, finding money. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that every business owner looks for is where can I get some capital? Um, unless they've managed to win the lottery or something, they don't necessarily have the cash to to start the process, maybe to get a little bit going, to prime the pump, so to speak, but they don't have everything that they need in order to make that business hum. And so uh, finding sources of funding can be critical. Now, we already talked about how the SBA guarantees loans and right. doesn't itself lend money, but can we talk a little bit about the types of programs that you have? Because you have multiple avenues of approach that a business might take. Is that correct? Right, exactly. Well, I think that the key to think about it is, is that small businesses are, are all very and they, they have varied kinds of finance needs. Uh, some need uh, expansion capital, some mm -hmm. need financing for real estate acquisition, some need it for debt refinancing. So there's a variety of different types of financing needs that small businesses have, and they need financing of different scale, and they need sure. it at different times in their business. So it, it really is the case that a, a one-size-fits-all really doesn't fit. So right. SBA tries to really understand that small businesses have needs for financing in different sizes at different stages for different purposes. And then we also do it with different partners. Okay. So can you give us a little bit of perspective as to what exactly that sure. means? Sure. Uh, so different sizes. SBA does lending from the micro lend what we describe as the micro lending size. And that's really the businesses that are needing that early stage financing, say under 50,000, but typically in the, the 15 and 20,000 range. And okay. a lot of those are businesses that are service businesses that uh, really need a relatively small amount of capital to be able to, to get to start and grow their business. Okay. And we do a lot of that with uh, some nonprofits that do SBA micro lending, a couple in the Bay Area that do that. Mm -hmm. And then as your business grows in size, a lot of businesses need really business financing to help uh, real estate acquisition, um, debt refinancing, business acquisition, uh, tenant improvements, working capital financing, mm -hmm. a whole range of SBA kind of things, really for the deals that are from 50000 to $5 million, that bigger okay. kind of loan. And those are, are done through a variety of lenders. We have about 105 banks in the Bay Area that will do at least one SBA loan. And they, they range from the very biggest of banks, mm -hmm. the Wells Fargo's of the world, if you will, to community banks uh, in the in and also credit unions and non-bank oh. lenders. So there's okay. a lot of different kind of SBA partners. Usually we try to fo tell folks, start with the business, the bank that you do your business banking right. with. Because you really want to have a, a relationship with your business lender. Right. And if they don't do SBA loans, come to us, there's a lot of or other Or if they lenders. don't have an appetite for that particular industry, then exactly. you might have to look. And that, that does happen sometimes. I, it does. Yeah. And a, a lot of the businesses who are looking for financing really need to understand that they should first really develop a relationship, but second, realize that there's a lot of other options. Right. So you mentioned microloans that are 50000 or less in general and then up to $5 million. Is $5 million the maximum t size of a loan that someone can get that would have an SBA guarantee? Actually, we can do bigger loans than that, uh, particularly for real estate um, projects through our 504 program, which is a real estate program. Okay. SBA really has two programs, if you will. One is for real estate, called the 504 program, or the Development Company Loan Program, mm -hmm. and that can be uh, loans that it can be up to 10 million. Okay. Uh, they're structured a little bit differently than than other SBA loans, but they're really strictly for real estate, mm -hmm. and that really is for businesses that are, that are pretty good scale and are looking to expand, get the real estate that they're operating from to allow them to own and operate their business from a, a location that they own the real estate. 
Then the 7A program, or the guarantee loan program, is the one we do with commercial lenders. Mm -hmm. And that is where we're guaranteeing a portion of the loan, typically 75% of the loan. And that could be used for a wide range of, of business uses. So it could be used for, uh, for things like debt refinancing and, and working capital, but it could also be used for tenant improvements if you're a tenant and you want to do improvements in your property. So there's a wide range, again, there's a wide range of things that SBA loans could be used for. So there's a, the, 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 the 504 and the 7A programs have um, somewhat of a difference in the purpose for which the funds will be utilized. Is the, um, uh, the underwriting criteria for lending the same or different? A little bit different. Uh, for real estate, the, the, it's really tied to the, you know, to the acquisition cost of the real estate and the debt service there. And usually what happens is a small business person typically would be a tenant renting a property, sees that they would be able to fix their housing costs, if you will, by buying the, build, the building that they own and want to operate from, mm -hmm. and realize that they can not only be able to, to, to contain their housing costs or their real estate costs, if you will, but also be able to build an asset for themselves and their business for right. the future. So. Uh, that's really tied to the ability of looking at the business to, to see what their housing costs are now, what their rental costs are, and seeing the debt service that, that could be used to pay on the SBA 504 loan. So in the 504 program, does it have to be an existing uh, structure that they're financing? or, or It can be, a, start, it can be a, a construction, a new, new construction. It can be an existing building they're going to acquire. It can, in many cases, be the, the building that the business is, own, is operating from now, as a tenant mm -hmm. and wants to buy the building buy the from building. the existing owner. But they could if they they see that they're growing and they have an opportunity to to build a facility, a structure right. that meets their their requirements as a as a business and they have a piece of land that they can get in wherever. So that that is possible then they could do that. A actually that's optimal. That's yeah. optimal. The idea is really that a business is really seeing an opportunity to say that the space that they're in is too confining for the, the growth of their business and really looking to find a new location, either an existing one or a new construction, right. to be able to expand their business. That allows them to be able to buy the real estate with 10% down. The, the biggest reason the 504 program is beneficial to small business is that it allows a business to get much higher leverage. Commercial mm -hmm. lending usually says they want to see something in the range of 60 or 70% financing loan to value is the way to describe it. The loan to as a percentage of the value of the property. Right. SBA allows a 90% financing. So 90% oh. of the purchase price can be financed. What that does is allow a small business to buy a building with a relatively small equity position right. and use that equity to expand their, their business. Oh, so put the money huge. back in their business rather than putting it in their building. Right. So the logic is that allows a business to expand and through that be able to hire people, expand their business faster. And so right. the 504 program while it's a real estate bill, uh, program, the real intent of it is to really allow a business to be able to keep their money that they have to put in their business in their business, not right. in their building. Got it. And so the 7A program, though, is for more ge uh, general usage and requirements that the business might have. Right. 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 And that can be used for real estate acquisition, too. But generally, it, it's used for things like working capital as a business is expanding. They see opportunities. They need to, to get some additional working capital to, to do additional marketing. They, mm -hmm. they may have a new product that they're rolling out, and they want to be able to, to expand their inventory, and they need to be able to market that and find other channels to be able to do distribution. They need working capital to do that. And so a key piece of the 7A program, the Guarantee Loan Program, is that it's a tool to allow a business to expand their business. Got it. And there are different ceilings. The 504, you said, could go up to... 10 million and the Actually, eight. both of them are up to 5 million. The 504 program is, is a little bit of a uh, structured discussion here, <laughs> is, is that it's a second mortgage. There's a first mortgage uh, that is done by a conventional lender, okay. and then the 504 loan is a second loan. So it's 50% of, the, of the, the purchase price is from a conventional loan. Got it. 40% is from the SBA second mortgage 504. But that's and it's not directly from the SBA. It's through an SBA. It's um, through an SBA intermediary called a certified development company. Okay. A nonprofit that 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 is the actual conduit of the SBA money. So it's it's actually an SBA guarantee on a security that pays for that. And I'm getting a little more, more no, detail. No, no, but that's but cool. But but I think it, it the point is that that there is. Uh, an SBA component to these real estate loans. The 
the 50% of the value of the property, let's say it's a $10 million property, 50% of that value needs to go through your traditional lender, uh, Wells Fargo, B of A, right. um, Union Bank, whomever. Right. Uh, but then the, the SBA will work with a, a partner that in, what did a you call A certified development company. Certified development company that will lend up to an additional 40% of that value. Right, exactly. And the logic is, from the conventional financing side, they feel secure in having a 50% loan to value. The, the business owner is benefiting from having a relatively low 10% equity in right. that they can keep the business, keep their, their equity in the business. Right. Uh, and SBA takes a second mortgage, which is typically a riskier position. Sure. Uh, but it allows a business to be able to, it allows a lender to make a loan that they wouldn't make otherwise, and a lender, be, a borrower to be able to, to buy a building that they couldn't acquire otherwise. And it allows them through that to be able to expand faster than they otherwise sure. would have had to been able to do. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense. I think that's that's fantastic. Mark, let's talk a little bit about the, um, I, I had heard somewhere, and I can't, can't remember where I heard this, but some there was some discussion at a, a, with a group of people I was at not, not too, too long ago about the, there there's, the volume of lending that the SBA has been doing has been growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but the number of loans over the last couple of years may have been decreased. So the average dollar of value of the loan has gone up. Right. And, and is that because, why would that be, I guess, is the question. You, you figure a lot of these small businesses like you were talking about that might need you know $250,000 or less. Right. But the volume is going up. In general, and and they're getting some people are getting larger, some businesses are getting larger loans, and that sort of thing. So, where's the, how is that all playing how does, out? How does right that now? work? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, first off, you know SBA has been around for 60 years, so there's a lot of things that people have heard about SBA over a long course of time. But one of the things that is the case is that what we've seen in the last couple of years is that while in California we continue to do about the same volume of lending we did before the, the Great Recession, about $4 billion in lending. But the average loan size has gone up from about 240000 to about 540000 So to your point, the same of dollars uh, for about half the number of loans, if you will. And part of the reason for that is lenders are more cautious now. Uh, mm -hmm. What we have seen in the last couple of years is that lenders are, by the regulator's direction, are more cautious. So they're moving if you will, the credit criteria to a tighter credit to a stronger business to a bigger loan. Mm. So which is why uh, the SBA lending volume number-wise is not going up, dollar-wise is. is. Which is why a lot of SBA effort is really being placed on trying to find ways to incent lenders to do smaller loans. Now is this where some of these um, nonprofit partners that you were talking about might come into play? Exactly, exactly. One of them is to, to be able to do to expand the microloan program. So we have in the San Francisco district, we have about six micro lenders that do micro loans, those deals under 50. But we're also trying to move those micro lenders into the regular SBA program. In other words, to guarantee their loans to allow them to do loans up to 250,000. Hmm. So it allows the nonprofits to do deals that are smaller than what we see the conventional lending to be doing. But larger than the traditional 50,000, which is, which is, makes a lot of sense because that, that 250, uh, the up to 250,000, that seems to be a, a reasonable size where a lot of, or a high percentage, I would think, of the small businesses would find tremendous value if they're getting 100,000 or 150,000 or 200,000 right, dollars. Exactly. Loan. And that's exactly the niche uh, that we're seeing the, the, the what we call it the community advantage lenders is that the community advantage program is that program that, that allows a nonprofit micro lender to be able to do the regular SBA lending and their average loan size is nationally is about 130,000 so it's exactly what you say it allows uh, because these are nonprofits and their niche typically is going to be smaller deals sure and what they see is a lot of businesses that look very good but don't look big enough from a, a conventional lender point of view or a regular SBA lender to be able to, to do those loans. Lenders uh, are businesses and from their point of view they want to do the most profitable thing of and course. from the regulators they want to do the safest thing. So right. they're trying to balance safety, soundness and risk and so all that means that is that typically you see bigger loans. Right. Uh, it doesn't mean that every lender just does big loans but the average loan size is, is getting bigger and bigger. 
the, the community advantage lenders hopefully will be able to be play a niche in that 100 to 150 range that other regular lenders are not playing in to be able to do financing. So that's an important part of the strategy to try to get smaller loans. Now, is that um, strategy something that's being spearheaded by the SBA? Do the, asking a couple of questions here back to back, but since these are nonprofit organizations, uh, is it easy for them to say, well, we're going to go from 50 to 150 or 250, or are there some, some issues that they need to deal with internally to be, uh, to get their board to say, yeah, we can go on this level and that sort of thing. Exactly. Well, it's a challenge because uh, doing regular SBA lending does take a level of expertise beyond what they were accustomed to. So what we're seeing is they're moving into that cautiously. Mm. Uh, they understand that they're looking to do loans that were bigger than what they had typically done, which would, in many cases were loans that were under 20000 for our micro lenders. So to move into the hundred to 200000 range, it takes a level of expertise and, and understanding the SBA loan program in a way that the machinery, if you will, of doing an SBA loan is something they have to develop, acquire, and be proficient at. So it's, it's something that a nonprofit board would say, are we ready to do, that, ready to do that and let us move into it? But so, we think that there's really a great opportunity there. So that implies that the process that they may have had to go through for an SBA um, guaranteed loan that was $50,000 or 35000 or something like that is not as... Um, Arduous, yes, exactly. <laughs> as a as a two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Right. Loan. Well, let me explain the difference between the two. At, on the micro loan side, SBA will make a loan to the organization for typically about five hundred thousand or so, and then they take that and make micro deals out oh, of it. Okay. And they administer that program themselves, so oh. they don't process the loans through us. If they're be if they're coming in to do regular SBA guarantee loans, deal by deal, SBA looks at the deal. Oh, so there's a, a level of, of expertise that is needed beyond what they did say as a micro lender that becomes more complex. So they, they were only looking at their particular underwriting criteria and they didn't the, have to deal with for the micro understand, side. Exactly. Oh, for the micro side. But okay. it allows it allowed the micro lender to have a lot of flexibility to do the lending sure. they did, but now they're going to be able to do much bigger loans. But they could still do the smaller loans under that same kind of auspices, and then the larger ones they would have to go through the more traditional the regular channel. SBA guarantee loans, which are which require a lot more analysis. Typically, the businesses are more complex. There's more financial information. There's collateral issues that uh, that have more complexity to them. So as the loans get bigger, the deals get more complex. Right. And the nonprofits, which who in many cases were accustomed to making tiny deals to very small businesses, are moving into more complex areas. So we think it's an area where we have some, you have to have some really good nonprofits. Sure. And as, as great as small businesses are, nonprofits are also a key piece that for us, we couldn't do what we do without them. Sure. So let's, uh, I'm gonna, uh, have two, two things that come to mind here, but the one question I wanna ask is, obviously as, uh, as I've observed in many businesses that I've been in, as you go up market, which in this case is they're getting larger loans, um, then, you know, your profitability and other things are, are, are good. And so you tend to not put as much attention on, on the, lower, the smaller side of the market. Right. But there is a huge demand and need for that micro lending scenario that you talked about. So do you envision a, um, like a two-stage structure for, for the nonprofits in this way? I do, and I think that some of the, the nonprofits um, are really mission-based in what they're, what they're doing. They, they do this not because it's the most profitable thing, but because it's the mission of a nonprofit. It's a community-based organization that says, we're in this for the community. We need to be able to, to have a, a program that, that is fiscally sound and can be fiduciarily, fiduciarily managed correctly, right. but it's also we're doing it for the community that we're in. So the organizations who do this, first, are not based on their nonprofits. Sure. And second, they recognize that what is successful for them is if the community that they're in is successful. Yeah, successful. So, right. uh, but as they see that the scale of their loans get bigger, they see those to be more profitable too. Right. Which supports a stronger organization for the nonprofit. Of course. Right. So that's it. All of those are important pieces. But we do actually. Um, want to make sure that we don't lose that micro size. Because I would think so, yeah. The, the demand there is is really an, un, kind of an unlimited thing. There's so many people that are looking for that early stage financing. Uh, usually though, my advice to folks is that assume that, it, you're, that you're gonna get yourself started, 
with your own capital. Mm -hmm. And after you show a track record of being able to see that uh, to a lender that you're able to show profits and revenues and a repayment ability, that's where you want to talk to a micro lender. Got it. When we're talking about some of the more um, traditional loans and that above the micro lending um, stage where it has to go through certain processes, is there, uh, can you give my, our audience some sense as to uh, a timeline? Because one of the things that people mistakenly do, in my opinion, I've, I've been involved in working with lots of business over the years, is they, they reach a point where they say, I need cash and I need it f by Friday and, and this is what, oh, today's Wednesday, I need it Friday. Okay, and there's no way in almost any circumstance, unless you've got it buried in the backyard, to be able to go and get that sort of thing. Sure. So, so when we look at this sort of thing, let's set some expectations for the people out there in the audience as to what it is you should be looking at from a timeline perspective. Sure. Uh, typically, I usually say it takes about six weeks, you know, plus or minus. That's actually it, not bad at all. It's, it's usually not, and most of that is the time that it takes for a bank to make a decision. Mm. So in most cases, of that six weeks, if it's uh, a regular SBA loan, about five, four to five of those weeks will be at the bank sorting out the deal, if you will, mm -hmm. making sure you have all the financials, making sure that any information about collateral is something that, that is something the bank gets all their answers on. Uh, all the tax returns are up front. Um, it takes about four weeks for the bank to really figure out if this is a deal that fits for them. Mm -hmm. If it is, and the bank is one that makes that decision up front that it's good for them, with an SBA guarantee, they can bring it into SBA. It takes about a week to 10 days right. uh, for SBA to, to guarantee, to approve to the guarantee. It, yeah. And then the bank can disperse the loan out. Can you do that. those approvals locally here in San Francisco? Actually, what we have is a good number of lenders who what we describe as, as preferred lenders. And for them, what we, what we delegate is the ability to approve an SBA loan oh. without coming to SBA. So take a week off of that for the preferred lenders. Okay. And there's a good number of preferred lenders in the Bay Area. We have a very strong SBA component um, it, that are preferred lenders uh, and they can make expedited deals. Usually, back to your point, usually the ones who need the deal tomorrow usually are, are have an escrow that needs to be closed. They're right. buying a piece oh, of real yeah, estate, yeah, yeah. they need to have something closed. So those are the urgency kind of cases. Right. So my, my first advice is think about six weeks as about a right. ballpark to think about. But the most important thing is to go to a lender prepared. Exactly. And and then also to be able to take advantage, go to technical assistance, go to a small business development center or to SCORE and talk through your loan request. Mm -hmm. What you don't want to do is go to a bank and start asking questions like, how much can I borrow? Yeah, right. <laughs> because a <laughs> bank will not like, that, no. that, there's no confidence that will be gained by that. Right. You need so to go, you want to go say, prepared. here's what I need and here's why I need it. And here's all the documents I have to, to show you that I have the financial wherewithal to do it and the ability to repay the loan. So right. from a lender's point of view, they want to see folks who have been really prepared for financing. And, right. and technical assistance allows you to have those questions with somebody that's a counselor or a consultant right. without going to a banker and making a banker feel like you're not really prepared, you haven't done your homework. Exactly. So do your homework first. We have about four minutes left in the show tonight, but I wanted to ask you a couple other quick things. One is it sounds like from what you described that the, the sequence of things is that the approval happens at the bank level before it goes to the SBA. Is that correct? Exactly. Okay. Is it, uh, can, can you get pre-approved by the SBA for something or is that? No, actually we don't do pre-approvals, but you know, the banks, because again, a good number of them are preferred lenders, they can make their own decision. They can make a decision as to whether or not it would and, qualify. And I should mention that almost all, because banks work with SBA and have for many, many years in a lot of these cases, the banks know what SBA criteria is as well. So mm -hmm. a bank typically is not going to bring a loan to SBA that they don't think SBA would say yes to. It's right. about 95% of the loans that a bank says yes to, SBA does too, because they know exactly what we're looking for. Are there for. key criteria that are um, obvious um, over the side type circumstances? It won't work. Yeah. Well, I mean, issues that are serious credit problems like bankruptcies, you know, are always problems. Uh, eligibility sometimes is an issue. You know, we will not do loans to investor businesses. Uh, somebody wants to buy investment real estate, for example. Oh, okay. uh, so there's eligib some eligibility issues. There's some character issues. Um, you know, if you've just been released from prison, you're not going to get an SBA loan. Right. So there's some issues that are obvious that uh, that 
that a lender pretty much is going to say this can't or can be an SBA loan. And, right. and they know the SBA loan program well enough that they don't invest the time. It's important for them. Time is important to of them. Of course. They yes. won't invest the time unless they believe that it can be approved. Right. And they're pretty good at making that decision. Well, that's good. Okay, so as we look to wrap up here in the last couple of minutes, what haven't I touched on that we should uh, touch on relative to the services that are available by the SBA and, and how small business should be looking um, to take advantage of those services. Well, I think one of the things is, is that small businesses should recognize that the opportunities going forward are probably more positive for them in many cases. And the tools to be able to take advantage of them, good advice, financing, are something that SBA is, is able to help them with. In many cases, they're not aware of that, mm -hmm. but there's, you know, you don't take advantage of those opportunities of taking SBA services, and you miss the opportunity of doing it. So make sure that, you know, people do their homework, uh, but then also make sure that they take advantage of things that SBA can do to help them. Great. Um, and just a question that came up, I just thought of this. Is there, from the SBA perspective, um, does the government put a cap on the total dollar volume of loans that you could have out at any one time? Not on the total, but every year we have, a, 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 in this case, you know, an amount that we can guarantee up to. And uh, last year was about $16 billion. It's going to be similar this next year. Uh, we uh, probably will get close to that, but, but not hit up against the top of it. Got in the it. Bay Area, we did about um, $800 million of SBA guarantee loans last year, the wow. record that we've ever had. So actually, the, the uh, lending environment in the Bay Area is as strong as it's ever been for SBA Fantastic. loans. Fantastic. Mark, I really want to thank you for being with me today and, and joining us here on Reference Points. And ladies and gentlemen, in the viewing audience, think about what we've talked about today. Recognize that if you are planning to start a business or have a, a business that you're working through and have some needs for capital, really understand that you have a tremendous resource and what the SBA and its affiliated organizations can offer you. So do take advantage of that. Mark, again, I want to thank you for being here. And ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time on Reference Point.